There are only so many places that a given setup can go, but that sentence doesn't really cover what it looks like. So how do we write jokes that are funny, that make sense, but also show craft? I'm gonna bolt together some pretty far-flung ideas for this, Anthony Jeselnik and quantum mechanics, and painting, and sports. Let's get into it. Why Jeselnik? Because his comedy is pretty mean, but it's also extremely well-crafted. He puts a lot of time into his cruel jokes, and as a result, it's clear to us that they are hyper-real. He doesn't actually want to do these things. Cruelty profiteering is extremely popular right now, and fans of that cruelty will say that their favorite comedians are doing the same thing as Jeselnik when they advocate for domestic abuse or go after trans people. It's simply not the case. Some comics are just straight up saying abusive street jokes in their Netflix specials. Street jokes. The craft makes a difference. It's like the difference between someone texting you, f you, and that same person casting a custom letterpress plate and then using an antique tabletop press to make a one-off piece of art that says, f you. The message is the same, but in the latter case, even if it hurts, you kind of have to say, okay, this is special. This reminds me a lot of abstract art. If you don't know anything about it, and let me say here that I, barely know anything about it. But if you don't know anything about it, you could look at a Rothko and say, what the hell? Rectangles? I, I can do rectangles. My kid does rectangles in his diaper sometimes. But if you look at more of his work, you see that there's more. Why did he choose those shapes? How did he get that luminous, translucent effect? Most importantly though, why did he do those works over and over again? What was he looking for? To me, that's Jeselnik. If he had one or two jokes that were this weird, crafted version of offensiveness, maybe that's just luck. But living in it the way that Jeselnik does, alongside his extremely deliberate movements and speech, that's not luck. That's his art. How do we move our jokes in that direction? Well, here's how Jeselnik says he does it. When you write your comedy jokes, mm -hmm. they're so good. Mm -hmm. Do you think of the twist before you write it? Or do you think of the premise first and then just like scramble your brain for the twist? The latter. I think of the premise and I think of how many different ways it can go and then what's like the meanest, most unexpected, yet still makes sense way. I think an accurate depiction of what the punches for a given setup look like is the output pattern of the double slit experiment. Now, obviously, I'm not a quantum physicist, so check all the physics part of this with someone who is, but. The way that jokes land, or don't, and the way that I understand quantum particles to behave remind me of one another. The interference pattern that results from the double slit experiment looks like this. This is the way I visualize what Jeselnik is saying. He thinks of all the places that a joke can go while still making sense. In my mind, that's represented by these brighter areas here. Punches that aren't as good or don't make sense would fall in the dark. The area here in the middle is the brightest because it has the most overlap. Think of that as the most obvious punches, the ones that make the most sense. Then the brightness decreases as we move out here and the punches get less obvious. Jeselnik's work shows craft because when we hear a punch that comes from way out here, but it still makes sense, we know instinctively that he spent the time to think of all these punches too. That is reinforced over and over again when every one of his jokes comes from way out in left field. Each one proves that the previous one wasn't just luck. You can see the effect of this pattern anytime a comedian, nowadays, does topical comedy. Even if it's a nightly show, by the time the show's writers have written the jokes and the host has performed them, people on social media have already drilled all of these most obvious punches. You can control this in your comedy by controlling the setup of your jokes so that the punches are still a surprise, but with topical comedy, the setup is the news, so it's less malleable. The better you get at writing jokes, the more you'll be able to list the most obvious punches for any given setup. Now, going for what Jeselnik is doing is a very specialized thing. It's extremely time intensive. And if you're an unknown who's trying to shovel as much content as you possibly can into the gaping maw of <laughs> social media, you maybe don't always have time for this much craft. Also, sometimes the best joke for the moment is straight up the middle. A fastball, a jab, and a layup all rolled into a sports metaphor that you will like. I don't actually follow any of those sports. I assume they're all golf. If you're just walking around being funny day to day or flirting with someone you just met, do the obvious punches. No need to get fancy. But when you're on stage and people are hopefully paying attention, show some craft. Craft matters in all your work. But the more edgelordy you want to be, the more craft you need to show. 
Otherwise, you just come off as someone being shocking because they don't know how to be funny. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe, and maybe jump on the Patreon if you want to help me make more. And if you want to talk about comedy writing with people who are trying to do it in a constructive way, we also have a Discord channel.